Consider a set of end lines in the plane. One of the important combinatorial structures described by these set of end lines is their lower envelope. So the lower envelope can be considered as the minimum of n functions defined by these set of lines. In other words, it's the minimum of n linear functions. It is easy to see that the complexity is linear. By complexity here, we mean the number of edges contained in the minimum. In the picture, as you can see, there are four lines and there are four edges along the lower envelope, which is displayed in red. In general, it is easy to see that there are at most n edges in the lower envelope of n lines. This is because every line can appear at most once. As soon as a line disappears, it can no longer come back and appear as a lower envelope edge later on. However, once we look at more complicated objects, this is no longer true. For example, let's look at the set of n right rays. A right ray we describe as a ray, as a line segment, that goes to plus infinity in the x direction. For example, all these five rays described in this picture are right rays. We like to look at their lower envelope. And once again, the lower envelope is the minimum of the functions described by these rays. As you can see, the lower envelope could have discontinuity, for example, in this case, or it could also be undefined. For example, if all the rays start um, here, then before this point, the lower envelope is not defined. However, we could still talk about the complexity of uh, the lower envelope, which we count again as a number of line segments or, or edges described by the, this minimum diagram. The first thing you'll notice is that the, amount, the number of discontinuities is bounded. Since every um, ray has exactly one vertex, the number of discontinuities can be at most n. So the number of these dashed lines is, can be easily bounded by n. But how about the remaining line segments? It is no longer true that a line segment, a line can appear at most once in the lower envelope. For example, in this picture, this line or this ray contributes three edges to this lower envelope. Here we prove a bound of n log n. You can prove a much better bound later on or even using more complicated arguments. But this uh, proof is to show that um, is to showcase some of the techniques we, uh, you can use, and it will also uh, can be used as a measure for the later improvement that we'll describe. So the proof goes as follows: We divide the set of rays into two sets, the n over two, where the n point, where the starting point right lies to the left of this dividing line, and the n over two rays, where the starting vertex lies to the right of this dividing line. We call these left rays, or we call this left se section, and we call this the right section. We can bound the number of intersections as follows. You could have two left-left intersections. So you could have two rays that both rays originate from left side, or you could have two rays both orig originating from right side intersecting. These two values can be captured by two recursive functions, f of n over 2 and f of n over 2. However, we have not counted one last type of intersection, the intersection with the ray that starts from left and, and, and its intersection with the ray that starts from right. Those left-right intersections are the last thing that we need to bound. To do that, we use the following observation. If you look at the rays that start from the left, when they cross to the right side of this diagram, they no longer look like rays. In fact, they look like lines. So in fact, the lower envelope of the, the rays starting from the left of this line looks like a convex object, and every ray appears exactly or at most once along this object. And now if you consider a right uh, a ray starting from the right side of this picture, this ray can intersect this convex object at most twice. So it can contribute at most two intersection points. To the, to the lower envelope. This means you have n over 2 rays at the right side of the picture. Each one contributes at most 2, so you get this recursion, which can you can easily see solves to n log n. If you look at even more complicated objects, such as line segments, 
the previous proof no longer works. And in fact, it becomes more difficult to estimate their complexity. It is possible to prove something like this relatively easily by extending the previous approach and considering more cases. But better bounds for now remains inaccessible for us. And this will be the starting point or this will be the motivation to look at the next topic in this series.